At the end of each DNA strand in your chromosomes, there is a sequence of base pairs that repeats over and over. That sequence is TTAGGG. It might appear to be junk DNA, but it has an important function. It causes the strand to fold on itself, thus preventing it from unraveling. That repeated sequence is the telomere. The concept of God has a similar function. It is not useful as a description of reality, and it might appear to be simply mimetic garbage. But it has an important function. It holds together a system of memes and prevents it from unraveling. Mythos is a container for ethos. Mythos holds together and passes down accumulated knowledge, especially values. Religion is a way of propagating a cultural package down the generations. The symbols and rituals of religion are merely packaging for values and traditions that have important functions. Religion is an anchor for the values of an individual and the organizing principles of a society. It provides a foundation for thought and communication, an end point of reasoning and debate. It holds together and propagates a package of beliefs and behavior patterns that have worked well in the past. Religion is part of deep culture. Deep culture gives us a shared conceptual framework that is necessary for thought, communication, and action. You don't think in an unbounded space. You think inside a box. That box consists of tacit assumptions, things that you take for granted. That box is the conceptual framework through which you make sense of your existence. Deep culture is acquired at an early age, so it propagates itself mostly down lines of genetic descent, from parent to child. Memes, like genes, are selected for their ability to propagate themselves. Genes and memes evolve together and depend on each other. Because deep culture propagates from parent to child, it tends to promote reproduction. Religions that do not promote reproduction tend to die out and be replaced by religions that do. Religion is a cultural adaptation that helps people to survive and reproduce. Not only does it promote reproduction, it passes down accumulated wisdom, life ways, patterns of behavior that have worked in the past. This is especially important if people find them counterintuitive or do not understand the reasons for them. Religion can still propagate such patterns of behavior. Not all religious beliefs propagate down lines of genetic descent, from parent to child. Some propagate laterally, between unrelated individuals. I call these cults, rather than religions. Cults are fashions, rather than traditions. Traditions propagate down lines of genetic descent. Fashions propagate laterally, from mind to mind, in adolescence or adulthood. Traditions promote reproduction, because that is how they propagate themselves. Fashions tend to suppress reproduction, because that is not how they propagate. Instead, fashions promote patterns of social behavior that help to spread the fashion. Because they are passed from parent to child, 
traditions are aligned with the genes of their carriers. By contrast, fashions are often parasitic on the genes of their carriers. Fashions propagate in the same way as diseases, hopping from one person to another. Fashions are thus selected for their ability to propagate in this way. They are selected to be persuasive or intuitively compelling, but not necessarily adaptive. Religions often begin as fashions, which is to say they often begin as cults, and then settle down to become traditions, true religions, that are passed along the lines of genetic descent. Religion has a biological function, and religion has a social function. It provides symbols and rituals that people use to synchronize their emotions. The synchronization of emotions is a way of coordinating behavior. Religion helps to create social coherence and group agency. Again, cults and religions differ. Religions tend to promote the existing social order because they are adapted to it. The interests of religious memes are aligned with the genes of their carriers and with the societies in which they live. Religions tend to promote the genes of their carriers and the existing social order. Culture society, and biology have adaptive coherence. They evolve or develop together, and thus they tend to be mutually supporting. Cults, because they do not pass down lines of genetic descent, are not aligned with the genes of their carriers, and they are also often opposed to the existing social order. They often propose a revolutionary transformation of the social order, partly because this is a way to attract a lot of people. It creates a compelling story, a compelling narrative, a narrative of liberation. Cults often appeal to the masses and promise them a utopia. This is a method of propagating themselves. Another function of religion is to protect us from the abyss. It takes a lot of courage to face the nature of existence without comforting delusions, to accept your mortality, to face the lack of a firm foundation for meaning, truth, and value, to face the vastness and indifference of the cosmos. Most people simply can't face the abyss or deal with its philosophical implications. They cling to religious beliefs with the desperation of a drowning man. I am an atheist, but I don't think that religion can simply be thrown away. Most atheists seem to believe that religion can simply be discarded, that it has outlived whatever purpose it may have had. They are wrong. Religion has very important functions. If it is thrown away, it will simply be replaced by a new religion or ideology that fits into the space left by the old religion. And you can see that today. You can see humanism, which is a kind of religion, filling the space that was left vacant by the elimination of Christianity in the West, by the death of God. If a car has a flat tire, simply removing the tire does not make the car drive any better. Likewise, 
if you remove the idea of God from a religious worldview, the worldview will not be more rational than it was before, and it will probably be less functional. It will still be irrational, but it will now also be incomplete and incoherent. The rational substitute for religion is philosophy. But creating a rational basis for human existence is a huge philosophical challenge. It is not something most people are willing or able to do. Most people need religion to guide them down the path of life. They need tacit assumptions so that they can think inside a box. They need boundaries to thought. They need foundations for reason and debate. They need a cultural foundation for their society. They need religion. They need God to hold their lives together, to hold their societies together, and to protect them from the abyss. Telomeres don't last forever, and neither do telememes. Modernity has disrupted traditional religious worldviews beyond the point of return. New forms of communication, such as television and the internet, have made the lateral transmission of memes much more effective than before. Fashions propagate easily through mass media. Traditions do not. They still rely on parent to child transmission. Traditions that propagate from parent to child are being replaced by fashions that propagate via mass media and the education system. Such fashions are selected for their ability to be persuasive and to spread via the education system and the media. They are not selected for their ability to help people survive and reproduce. As these fashions are spreading through human populations, the populations that are most affected by them are dying out because they are failing to reproduce. So there is a meme war going on right now. There is a culture war going on, not just between people with different ideas, but between the ideas themselves, between memes or systems of memes that are fighting for their realization, for their manifestation, in the same way that genes compete to be manifested in reality, in individuals. Memes compete to be manifested in individual minds. What we have right now is an epidemic of mimetic disease that is sweeping the world, a plague that is wiping out entire populations, not by killing them, but by turning them away from reproduction. At the same time, we have a resurgence of fundamentalist traditional religions that propagate from parent to child Examples include fundamentalist Islam and the Amish, and also Orthodox Jews. All of these religions are growing, mainly by reproduction. The Amish population doubles every 20 years. It is growing at a faster rate than the population of Africa. It is more than doubling in each generation. The Orthodox Jewish population of Israel is growing at a similar rate. And the Islamic population of the world is growing very rapidly. We live in interesting times.